Hey, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm hyped. I am at Hybrid Feed in Kaduna. Look, the place blew my mind when I came in. It's so massive. Christ, I didn't know how big this place was. I heard about this place and I heard about the good things they're doing. What I did was I googled them and I tried to find out how big uh, are they. And I was shocked, first of all, to see how well they've been doing in the country. We're here today to talk about, to talk with their MD and to talk about how, what they do here. All right, guys, let's go in. Let me show you guys. Fine. No, I didn't miss my way. It was very easy to look at. They just had thought that I was shocked when I came and saw how massive it was. The church. Jeez, man. That's serious. Alright, then we can go in and talk about it. Alright. Alright. All right, thank you for welcoming us. Um, we are happy to be here because this is the first time me being here and uh, we learned that MD is not here. Can you just tell us about what you guys do here and your name, please? Okay. Thank you so much. Once again, I'll, I want to welcome you to Hybrid Feet. Uh, we are sitting in for the MD who I know he would have loved to be part of this, but uh, unfortunately he could, not, he could not make it. My name is Tosin. I'm the head of operations here. I'm side with uh, Mr. Clement. Clement Oko Simon. Nice to meet you guys. Center. So uh, basically what we do, we are a commercial feed entity. We are with, um, with um, our core is production of um, livestock feed, livestock and animal feeds rather. Uh, livestock, we, we range from poultry feed to uh, fish feed. And uh, we've been around for quite some time now. Uh, we became a commercial entity basically in 2005, May, May 5th, 2005 specifically, but we've been around before then. Um, as far as back, far back as 2000, 2002, but we we became a corporate entity in 2005, and uh, we've grown. Uh, I think this is the 16th year counting, and you know, for a child, a 16-year-old child, or a 16-year-old boy is no longer a child again. Yeah. And um, uh, with God on our side, we've been able to to do well for for ourselves. Like I said. What would this production of uh, we are into animal nutrition production of animal feeds? Okay. Uh, when I say um, poultry, livestock, cattle, ruminant feeds, fish feed, uh, we have um, plants. I can go into that now. Okay. Okay. We have plants across you know, uh, in Kaduna, Ibadan, and Asaba. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's impressive. We have um, okay. similar plants. What we do, but well, in Kaduna, basically, we have. Um, we do our poultry feeds, but for the fish feed is produced predominantly in uh, Ibadan. Okay. We produce and distribute all over the country and mm. some adjoining countries too. So we can see our feed has gone international to an extent. Wow, that's beautiful. Benin Republic, if I'm correct, yes, Benin Republic, some parts of Niger. Whoa. Yes. That was basically before the border closure. Okay, um, okay. So, so what can you say is, uh, uh, you know, you, you say you've been a commercial entity since 2005. So what can you say has been the obstacle the company has faced trying to grow this entity? Well, for me, I, I would say at various times, various obstacles. Uh, the, the economic condition in 2005 is different from what it is now. So the hurdles we face then are quite different from what we are facing now. The challenges have been, they range from, from, um, from uh, raw material challenge, uh, I would say government policies. Even government policies, even labor to an extent, wow. workforce and the rest. But uh, in spite of all of that, we've been able to, to surmount them and achieve what we have been able to achieve now. Um, when, when we talk about government policies <coughs> while in the country, uh, we know of the recent uh, ban on importation of some feeding, uh, some, some materials. Uh, these are some of the materials that we use predominantly in poultry feed production. Okay. So you see, uh, and we are not self-sufficient in production of some of these things. That's Nigeria as a country. Okay. Okay. So you see, there's a lot of pressure on local production, okay. competition between uh, for scarce resources. Okay. So you can imagine that prices will, prices will go up, and uh, survival is usually <laughs> the first part of call at this point. Mm. 
So you want to shed more light on some of the challenges to come? Well, um, <laughs> like it's known to all, all uh, in Nigeria, there are always challenges with businesses. But at the same time, the, the opportunities abound and um, the market is big. Um, some of these challenges, like you rightly said, some government policy, some assaults and all of that. But at the same time, we are moving on and we are doing well. Okay, so what are the kind of materials that you, that you can get here that are not uh, imported? What materials do you get locally here that are not imported? Well, for, for the production of uh, animal feeds, yes. we use what we call the macro ingredients and the micro. Okay. Uh, the macro ones are like the word means it, uh, those big ones you could see, okay. while the tiny ones that are, you know, that are very tiny, those ones are majorly imported. Now, the macro ingredients are the likes of maize, soya, uh, sorghum, and the rest of um, the host of others. While for the micro, we have um, some Im imported, they are usually imported, majorly imported. They are additives, the feed additives. Those are the ones that are imported. So, um, you also say something about uh, the, the, you have challenges with legal or something. What kind of challenges do you have with legal? Well, for, for us, I wouldn't say it's a challenge basically, but we, we employ, because of the kind of business, it's, uh, there's every category of, of uh, you know, the skilled labor, the semi-skilled labor and unskilled labor yeah. is all required in this kind, in this kind of business. And, uh, but as you grow, you know, in terms of machinery, machinery uh, utilization, in terms of technology, you grow. So definitely the, the, the various skills required will change over time. Then actually for the community we find ourselves, uh, we at our old side there, we, we, ha we had to get labor from around the community. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But when we moved, we had to start, you know, you source for labor around your new community again. So it's a different community, it's a different uh, uh, mindset. So you have to adapt to them, they have to adapt to you. That's why I said, yes, it's, uh, it's, there's some labor, labor difficulties, but by and large, we've been able to surmount all of those. Oh, that's cool. Because that, that's one thing I, I know uh, factories like this should do because they should also employ from the community where they are because they're helping the community to grow. It's part of the fact that they, because they are part of that community, they should also employ people from there, mostly on skin label because you can't, most those kind of people will be the ones that maybe help you load your things in the truck and all that. So uh, that's good. Then the um, other question I want to ask is, you say you have factories in um, Asaba, uh, Ibadan, Ibado, and here. Do they produce the same thing in these three places, or do they produce differently, different things in the three factories? Well, by, by standards and regulation, we produce the same thing. Okay. It's 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 uh, it's. Uh, uh, is enforced on us to produce the same thing. But like I said, uh, for our fish food production, we have the factory in Ibadan. Although they do poultry fish production, so, so but the fish food production is done and distributed from Ibadan factory. Then in Kaduna here, a pelletized machine that we, we pelletize and, and uh, sell um, our feed. The pelletized machine is situated here in Kaduna. Okay. So, but basically, all of our production the standards, quality is the same all over, both Kaduna, Ibadan, and Asaba. So, can you, can you give like an estimate how many people you've taken off the streets that are, that are being employed in this, all these factories? Like, how many people do you have as staff? For direct labor, directly, those directly engaged to us, uh, above 400. Wow. Those directly engaged. Then those indirectly connected to us. Now we have distributors, we have suppliers, we have, uh, the, by extension, customers, yeah, yeah, the yeah, farmers, yeah. and the rest. So it's, it's, I, I don't think that you can put an estimate yeah, to that. Yeah, uh, that's uh, like a uh, pull effect. Yeah, exactly. Cascades, yeah, no, yeah, before. Cascades, uh, yeah. So 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 many people directly attached uh, to this business. Wow, that's brilliant. Even the, uh, I would say the food vendors. They are attached to, they are, they are to the business too. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> more or less, yes. <laughs> so, we, we, we just, I just wanted to know, it's my curiosity. You know, you say uh, fish, meal, you have fish, meal, you have for poultry. For poultry. Do you have, like, feed for, like, I okay, know now, you know, we do, like, rabbitry and all that. Do you have yes. feed for those two? Yes, specialized feeds, yes, wow. we do. For rabbitry, for turkey, for exotic birds, yes. Yeah. 
Wow. We have a lot. I only thought like in my you know my idea before I go into that. It just felt like it just about poultry. Po exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. We have we have a range of products. We have yes uh, for for quail. Oh, for, we have quail feeds. The one for ostrich. The one whatever what whatever feed. It is nutrition. Our core is animal nutrition. Yeah. So whatever it is that animals can take, I think we we are we are. We are good to go. Wow. Thank you very much for having us. I, I, I hope you don't mind taking us around to show us the factory, some of the things you do, so that we can show that to our viewers. Too. No, 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 I'll be fine, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You, what are these you guys are building? These are warehouses. Warehouses. Yeah, currently under construction, warehouses for raw material storage. For raw material storage. What about these ones on the side? These are also warehouses for as well as the Okay. You know what? You know how shocked I was when I entered the place. I thought it was small, but when they no, opened no, no. the gate, I was shocked to see how massive the place is. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tosin was saying, yeah, yeah. I was, I was telling them that this is like one third of the wow. Okay. happening up north this is Kaduna and it's happening here thank you for watching today's channel the today's video if you're new here please subscribe to my channel if not if you've been, if you've been a returning subscriber that has not subscribed please subscribe to my channel hit the like button share so the friends and family can see this it was nice being here I really appreciate being here today unfortunately we couldn't meet their MD but the lovely guys Tosin and his colleague that took us around were such wonderful were wonderful guys and also the guy in the in the factory 
beautiful. Thank you very much for watching today's video. See you guys in the very next one. Ciao. Bye. Like, share, comment, see you next time.